to do things. I don't have to. We're on. Okay. Hi, it's Shannon. Hi, I'm Rebecca. And we have Sunshine here in the live chat. So if you have any questions or comments, definitely let Sunshine know. Also, let us know where you're watching from. You know, we're here in Arizona. So just get in that chat and let us know where you guys are. And thanks so much for coming and joining us today. We are going to swatch out the, or stamp out and do a uh, color wheel with the color wheel stamp set. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're gonna do some water coloring to um, fill it out. I'm just going to put this out so you can kind of see. I have some water paper, watercolor paper here in my Misty. I'm just going to stamp it with the Misty today. And I'll move some of this. This is the watercolors you're using today. This is available at Waffle Flower. And this palette is pretty nice because it has all of the colors we need, all 12 colors to fill out the color wheel, plus a white and a black for doing some glazing, which I will show you later. We're basically going to create our own personal color wheel. There's lots of color wheels out there that you can purchase. This is a really nice one, but it was really nice to do it with the, the media that you have. Uh, that way you get to some practice in with your media, but also you have this great reference that you can use with that particular media, you know, that those colors. And I think that's really great for um, making, uh, well, for card making, because we're card makers, you have uh, those exact colors for your color relationships or your color harmonies. You know exactly what those colors are look, look, look like and how they look like together. So I definitely think making your own color wheels with your own media is really, really helpful for um, col coming up with color schemes. And then if you have multiple sets, you can make one for each set, right? And yes, or um, I'm having going to have a video coming out soon for Waffle Flower where I do one with tints and one with shades. I mean, there's just so much versatility you can use, not just using different media like Tombow markers or Distress inks or watercolors or even Copics. You can use all that different media with the color wheels and make your own different color wheels for those different media, but you can also kind of think about it with tints and shades and I'll talk more about um, those kind of what that means when we get going and start working on this wheel today. We'll learn a, lot, a little bit, we'll dive into some color theory, learn about primary, secondary, tertiary colors and, and tints and shades and warm and cool. We'll learn some color theory today as well. Awesome. So I'm gonna get started. <laughs> so you definitely recommend using a watercolor paper if you're gonna be creating a color wheel for specifically for watercolors. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. And um, waterproof ink as well because you're gonna introduce water. You don't want your stamped image to bleed or run. Mm. Um, I, you, you will probably, you will learn, and that's another advantage too with doing your own is you can try out different papers too. You can stamp on different types of paper and try out like uh, we learned in one of our live videos, we really got to see a side-by-side of Tombow markers, watercolor, we watercolored with them on watercolor paper and versus Bristol paper. And we both liked how the colors moved on Bristol paper. So that's an advantage too, with doing these kind of swatching or color wheels, you can try out different types of paper, even different brands of watercolor paper and find out what's your favorite and you can really compare to and see what they, you know, what one paper worked, how that worked with your media versus another. So this stamp that you're using, can you tell us a little bit about the stamp set? <laughs> yes. So this is the stamp set. I think it's probably the best way to show you guys. And um, we're going to be using this main central image here. And this has 12 different sections. These are all the colors. And you can see there's little abbreviation. I don't know if you guys can see, it's kind of small for the camera, but there's a Y here and then YG. These are just uh, abbreviations for the color. So this would be yellow, yellow, green, green, blue, green, blue, blue, violet, violet, red, violet, red, red, orange, orange, yellow, orange, and then we're back at yellow. So this is what we're using to create our wheel today. And you can also see that it's divided further up into smaller sections here. We're gonna go over this today in the color wheel when we paint. These, there is a die that goes with this stamp set. I'll pull it out here. And this die will fit on top after we're all color done painting this and filling out this color wheel. This will go on top and each one of these sections will kind of, we have, we'll put another color on top 
and this will kind of let you know what yellow looks like with red on top or what green looks or yellow green looks like with blue or green looks like with um, red so those are we'll do that too and we'll kind of and we'll talk about glazing what glazing is and all that but um, that's how we're gonna fill out this chart and that's why all these sections here are there but they can be used for other things too you can also like I was mentioning earlier you can use those sections to um, show tints or shades so everybody out there do you use a color wheel for your card making or other paper crafting or how do you pick your color combinations do you think about color theory when you're crafting we're curious and just let us know in that live chat so I have to admit that I um, have not used a color wheel but I mean like I've used them before because I went to art school but um, since art school I kind of haven't like played around with like different color harmonies and in the process of making working on the video for you guys on um, a color wheel I really realized how few colors I was using and definitely <laughs> how few color schemes and I really was like oh gosh I am really a color chicken and I thought <laughs> I was really be I, th I always thought I was really bold with colors but now when I go back and look at my card samples and I realize there's a whole bunch of harmonious color schemes that I have never even used once ever and I make a lot of cards so <laughs> it's really shameful so I have been really excited about learning more about the color wheel because it's really teaching me or opening my mind up to all the different um, color schemes that I could use so I stamped it once, I'm gonna stamp it one more time just to make it nice and bold. I had bought a color wheel a long time ago when I first started scrapbooking. And I don't even know what made me purchase it oh. at the time. <laughs> I was just like, oh, that's really cool. And you know, I put it up on a shelf and I never used it. And now watching you guys do this, I'm definitely thinking I need, It's it makes more sense to have ones for your mediums oh, yeah. and what you're using. So if you're a watercolor person, this makes a lot of sense to use with watercolors. If, like Shannon said, you're more of a Copic person, this would be great for our Copics as well. And I think once you once you do it, you might come up with other way, like other, because I'm starting to think of all these different other ways that I think would be helpful to organize my colors and really better understand my media by through the using the color wheel like one example is you can use um, complementary colors to kind of create your shadows and tone down I think that would be really helpful for Copics because it's really easy to grab the complementary shade and go right over and use that for your shade for shading especially if you don't if you're like me and you don't have a lot a lot a lot of Copics mm -hmm. it's good to have some kind of tools and I think uh, I might explore that idea with the color wheel as well so let's see here. So I got it stamped. I'm going to grab my paints. Do you say that again? I'm sorry. Can we have close of you paint the color wheel? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> you <should>. Okay. <laughs> Re Re <laughs> Very stressful. <laughs> so Brooke is going to do it too. <laughs> All right, so you're going to have to show me. Ooh. I'm, I'm, I'm hot today, started. guys. I might be, I wore a sweater. See, what's the weather? 74 here, so that's so cold. We're picking out our sweaters yeah, and so we, we pretend here in Arizona quite a lot that it's, this is almost not pretending, though. This is almost like for this real cool for sort of cold weather. Especially sort of. before Halloween, so. Yeah, we were, we were, we're loving it. So, you know, I wore a sweater today. Of course, now I'm burning up, so I really feel like I need to roll my sleeves up here. Yeah, really okay, so I'm going to clean my brush here, get some paper, there's color still on this brush. You need a brush. That's okay. Yeah, let me get you a brush, Rebecca. I saw them down here. Okay. There you go. Thank you. I'm getting one more just in case we decide we want a bigger one. <laughs> And why don't we start, like, you take one, so we got, the palette's already pretty much divided up into warm and cools. So I'll, I'll give you warm, and I'll start with cools. Just so we're not using the same thing. Oh, I see. And I'll <laughs> start with the, so let me pull them out. This is, 
I'm going to point out the color so it's easy to kind of know. We will have to mix one I know for sure. So this is going to be our red. This is going to be our let's see if I can put red this. orange. Yeah, our red orange. So our red, red orange, orange. Then we're going to have to mix a yellow orange. Then we have yellow. Then over here in our pools, we have our yellow green. Where is that? There it is. Yellow green green and we'll have to mix a blue green and then we have a blue blue violet violet and then we'll have to mix a red green so we'll do some color mixing because this doesn't have all the 12 colors but most of them I think there was only three that we have to mix so that's pretty good and we'll start that way and I'm gonna turn my wheel here get myself oriented and I'll start with green make sure I'm on camera so you guys can see Okay, so you don't start with the primaries necessarily? Well, if you're, so you could start with the primaries. It just depends on um, what, what kind of exercise you're doing with your color wheel. If you're uh, doing an exercise mainly on mixing colors, like a real um, starting with just the primaries, you would start with the, you would just start with a, um, a red, a blue, and a yellow, which is a primary. But a, a hint here, if you are gonna <laughs> do that, um, pick a, a kind of a magenta red, not a red red, you want more of a pinky red. Uh, pick more of a scion blue, that's a better color for mixing. And your yellow is, is, is pretty much, you can just use a regular yellow, whatever yellow you have in your mind is probably fine. But if you pick colors more, in, especially that red and that uh, blue, more like a magenta, more like a scion, you'll get a better color wheel. You get your, it'll mix better and you'll do a better job with mixing. And that's a really great exercise. And, and I will cover that in my second color wheel video that I'm doing. I'm doing two, and they're coming Stay up soon. Stay tuned. <laughs> yes. And we'll go into that quite a lot. Oh, up here. Oh. So I'm going to start with green, just because that's already mixed. I will mix, well, let's start with, I'll start with primary, okay. just, to, just, just so it, I can identify them better than yeah. once I have it all painted. So I'll start with blue, because that's the only primary I have right now in front of me. And I'll just add a little water. And we're using cake um, watercolors today. That's just because they're dried in this, like, as versus what we've been using in the last couple of videos, which was um, from the tube. So this is a little different than what we've done in the last two videos. And I'm just going to paint this whole thing with this blue. And what I'm going to try to do here is keep it I'm going to mix a little bit more in this palette here. I want it the same intensity of blue the whole, for this whole pie section of this, for this blue. And, and how do you know how much water you should be adding as you're going through the pie there? Like, are you trying to keep it more opaque or are you just trying to I'm trying to get it even mm -hmm. um, I'm a little dry you definitely want to try to mix up as much of the color you're going to need all in one go sort of like you don't want to have to have to mix like, this is going to be more important when we actually have to mix up like our yellow orange or our blue green you want to get enough of that color mixed up so you can cover the whole area that you want to paint with that. You don't want to have to stop like three-fourths away and mix up some more blue-green because it most it'll inevitably not be exactly the same Just shade. like painting your house or something. Exactly. You want it all in one batch. Yeah. <laughs> so that's blues done. I'm going to clean my brush here and I'm now going to go on to... Where's yours blue? <laughs> i got to do my blue at the same time. Okay. <laughs> up here, up here, up here, up here. Okay. okay. And I'm going to go right onto Sorry, yellow now. You're fine. We'll move this <laughs> in the center so we are not reaching over each other. Let me get you a cup. Thanks. Oh, yeah. And this is kind of opaque um, um, paint to start with, with your question before about mm -hmm. like, uh, and I think that really comes down to your personal preference too, a little bit too, and kind of how you, you paint. I think I'm heavy handed, so. I like really saturated colors, so I tend to use a little uh, less water, and so I get more of a bright 
vibrant color. Okay. That's not necessarily the right way to do it. That's just that's just how I do it. And so I'm sure you guys know already. <laughs> I'm sure it was no surprise to you that blue, yellow, and red are the primary colors because I'm sure you've already learned about that in, well, I think they start teaching that to like kindergartens. You know, they learn, they start learning about, like art teachers have to start teaching color theory right, pretty early on. And we will move on after these primary colors to secondary colors, which I'm sure you guys are very familiar with and understand, you know, when you mix yellow and blue, you get green, that's a secondary color. And then we'll get on to tertiary colors, which is just, adding more um, beautiful hues to our rainbow of our color wheel. Okay, now I'm on red. And I'm using this really kind of dark shade here, but it will get lighter as we paint with it. Maybe I should put it over here. And you can use whatever color, whatever media you have, like we mentioned before, you can use whatever media you have to make your color wheel. So that's pretty, you could even um, experiment with uh, distress oxides possibly, like watercoloring with them. I've only done a little bit of watercoloring with distress oxides and they're kind of, they're kind of cool. Yeah, it's fun. Does anybody have any questions? No, Not you're yet. answering your questions. Yes. <laughs> Can you ask a question? Let's see, what else? Um, so oh, how many watercolor out. card makers do we have out there? Do you guys use watercolors on your cards? And what kind do you use? Do you use the tubes? Do you like the cakes better? Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Do you prefer this type, the cakes versus the tubes? Or do you have a preference? Do you I just like? I am such a chameleon. I just do <laughs> whatever. I use whatever is in front of me. I just I go with the flow. <laughs> I, I like how. Uh, m I think the thing that I am always looking for is what I I'm attracted to is transparency. Um, I don't particularly like opaque color, especially for watercoloring. I think. To me, the beauty of watercolor is when it's transparent and you can kind of see the layers of color. I think you lose that. Okay. <laughs> Let me oh, make sure for you. So that's what I know I'm attracted to, and that's kind of why I lean towards distress inks. I kind of, while watercolor distress inks or Tombows a lot, as opposed to really nice tube watercolor paints, which I think are beautiful. I just, I don't particularly own a lot of those, so I don't use them because I don't own them. And not that I'm against them, actually. I think, I know for the video, I'm gonna purchase um, three um, nice watercolor tubes for the mixing video. But I also like to use things that I know you guys have. You know, I know most of you have like all the distress inks. Most of you have some Tombos or at least a couple. You know, I like to use things that I know you have too. So, and I think they do a good job too. I like to watercolor with distress inks. Okay, so I've got the primary colors here. Now we're gonna move on to the secondary colors. And the secondary colors, I can point them out. We're going to do orange. They're really basically between the two primaries. So we have orange, green, and violet. So those are the next three colors we're gonna do. And they're already here on the palette, so I'm not gonna mix them. I could mix them, I could literally mix the red and yellow together to create an orange, but I'm gonna just use what's right here in front of us, because we'll save a little, we'll do plenty of more kind yeah, of mixing cheap later. Watercolors, one thing about the cheap watercolors is they don't mix well. They don't well. mix well, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you could hear Nina, she said that it's very <laughs> true. I'm just not sure if you, what they can hear, that cheap watercolors, which, um, these these are and a lot of like well some of your cake ones not all cake ones are but um, they don't mix as well. They get very vibrant colors, but they're opaque and doesn't mix well. Mm -hmm. No, that that's the opacity is making it difficult to mix. Mm -hmm. Okay, green. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Mid high and Pamela both use zigs. Oh yeah, so See, I don't have zigs. I need to get some zigs. Um, well, it'll be our next. Oh, tell them we are now. Oh, okay. So next next Friday we will not be doing a live. 
So don't, don't, not, oh, not here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we might do it when we're in the Oh, <laughs> traveling live, oh. possibly. <laughs> so it's a, I think it's a maybe if we're going to do a live next time. Is that right? <laughs> a maybe. Okay. We're traveling. No, no, no. If we do a live, you will not be on YouTube. You oh. might be on Instagram or Facebook. Okay. Like if we do a live now here, but next week we might be able to tune in on our phone. Is it on Instagram or Facebook? Where do they want us to do it? Okay. Facebook or Instagram? So I don't know if you guys can hear, but so next week we will not be doing a live here on YouTube, but we may do a live next Friday anyways on Instagram or Facebook. So please let us know which one you would prefer. And do you follow us on all those other social media platforms? Let us know if you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, obviously you're here on YouTube. Just let us know where you guys like to hang out social media wise. Okay, so I skipped around because <laughs> I just used what was open at the time. That's okay. <laughs> so now I, I need to I finish my primaries. <laughs> so bar there, Penty, I'm just saying hi. I'm here too. <laughs> <laughs> Try to smooth this out a little bit. It looks a little. Okay, done with green. Now we're going to go on to orange. Oh, I just touched mine and left a big fingerprint on it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. He leaves fingerprints. <laughs> like, it doesn't sink into paper. Ah. Uh, oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> <He's so laughs> no, yes. it's all clear. <laughs> well, because it probably doesn't stain. Yeah. Usually transparent paints, watercolor paints, will stain, so they're kind of sinking down into the fibers of the paper and staining means you can't lift it up with water. Mm. And that's a typical trait of, of um, transparent paints. Okay, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be not so heavy handed here because I like how yours is. Well, see, and I like how yours oh. is. <laughs> I was like, how did you get it so nice and even and thick? I, not a lot of water, but I don't, again, like I said, it's, I don't think that's the thing that's the right way, but I know you that's like my. Brush? I do. I, I, I think I don't have a problem with this. I like the the size of it too. I think I'm doing it. Yeah, I just wish the bristles could be a little shorter on the bigger ones. It's oh. a little bit too long. Mm -hmm. Like it's hard to control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Do you like the brushes, uh, Rebecca? I do. I think let's see. I think probably maybe the other one is a little bit. Mm, no, see, like you want oh, I have no, a big that one is maybe a little too thick. Do you think? I don't know. I'll try it. Oh, I have a six. I thought I gave you the same size, but I don't think I have another six around yeah, here. Yeah, that's okay. It's too small for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel well, like it's easier to keep it even if I cover more yes, at, all at once. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a saying is to use the biggest brush possible to get the job done, ah. like to make it easy for you. How many wells do we have here? One, two, three, four, Oops, five, ten. ten, right? <gasps> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I almost knocked something I, over. I think I accidentally put a yellow when we already had yellow. <laughs> I think there's only ten anyway, so we're going to have to um, clean some out, so no worries. Oops. I usually use the lid too. Oh yeah, right here, the little lid. Yeah, I like this set. I feel like it's, uh, you could travel with it pretty easily too. I think it's, uh, the colors are nice and bright mm -hmm. though. I like them. Even though it's an opaque one, it doesn't look too, it doesn't look chalky. OMG. <laughs> okay, let's put it somewhere else. Can I help? Maybe just down there. Yeah, I'm just put it down here. So what you guys couldn't right? see is I'm just knocking um, <laughs> uh, plates around here. There's only so, so much room on the table. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, and I've got these ungodly lo long arms. <laughs> so a little bit more water here. Okay, Violet. How come your um, uh, Rebecca's red is almost like a <laughs> See? <laughs> Rose madam. Oh no, that's so <laughs> funny. Almost like a blue red. 
So I made a big boo-boo here. Let's see if I can clean it up. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's looking better. I hopefully can cover it up with the red violet. At least it's a still a dark shade. Oh, you're painting like me. Come <laughs> 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 oh, on. Okay. I don't know where I had to clean my brush out. Well, I guess I didn't have to, but I did. So do you have a Do you have a favorite watercolor paper? Do you like this that you've been using lately? Ah, no? uh, gosh, I'm such a bad person to ask. I've been uh, what I've been using is um, some Canson watercolor paper. I think it does a pretty good job. It's not the best. Um, and I like this B paper too that we have. It's very, um, it just is not always the best with distress uh, inks. So when I use distress inks, I'll sometimes use the Canson watercolor paper or Bristol paper, either one of those. Um, but for watercolors, this B paper is really nice. So why is distress ink not good as a B paper? It does some bleeding a little bit on the edges. When we did the, when we did a swatch video here live, we did, we swatched out distress ink colors and they just, would bleed a little bit more out, like outside of the stamped area. So, I, th I think this. I think this is of just why this paper is so good for watercolors because it allows your colors to kind of move, but maybe not so good for it, like inks because they really kind of move more. That's what that's what distress inks are. They're, you're painting with inks. Sorry, guys, I'm so hot. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I feel like I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. It's just, so I can survive. But I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to be wearing a sweater again. <laughs> I know that. No, I'm not having a sweater. So many it's of too us soon. <laughs> I've never been hot before like I'm today. <laughs> like never. She's a, you are always the cold I'm cold, cold one. <laughs> yeah. I can turn the um, air conditioner on a little bit more. Maybe this side. Yeah. Okay. So we're almost done here with the my violet and that will complete my secondary colors. Awesome. Those look pretty. Looks like a beach ball. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. So now we're going to move on to the tertiary colors. And that is all the white um, pie sections that I have left here. So that is going to be red orange, yellow orange, yellow green, blue green, blue violet, and red violet. And essentially you would be mixing these two colors to create this one. And in your mind, so when you're doing a color wheel, this shade should look like, so this red orange shade should look like half red, half orange. But in real life, well, this one's already pre-mixed. Let's talk more about the yellow because the, the, the yellow orange we're gonna have to mix together. We have some of these shades, the tertiary colors already mixed for us, like our red orange we have already and as a cake form so we can just paint it. But for this yellow orange, we're gonna have to mix it. So what I was saying before is the shade what we're gonna mix here is going to be, you wanna envision a 50 fix, 50 fix, 50, 50 mix. And, but that's not necessarily how much paint you're gonna use. Yeah. You're not gonna necessarily use a ratio of one to one because a one that's not necessarily how paints are, that's how color is in your mind, but that's not how paints are going to create that color. So your goal is a 50-50 mix, but you're gonna have to play around with your colors. And I know, I can just tell by looking, I've never done this with these paints. This is actually the very first time I've ever swatched these paints out. I can just tell by how intense this orange is mm -hmm. that I'm going to use very, very, very little of that orange. So it's gonna be almost probably a three to one ratio, if not even less orange than that. So um, that's pretty much what I'm going to so Use as a guy. Basically, just seeing how pigmented one is versus the Ye other. Yeah, like and, and and you can kind of think t like I'm trying to think. Of, we have another one we're going to mix here. Red violet. Yeah, I know that th though both of them are very intense colors. The red and the purple. It's probably going to be a, just a little bit of purple, and mostly red, to get a red violet. Because mm -hmm. I think that purple is going to overpower the red. And again, that's our red, and that's our purple. Or violet. Purple or violet. <laughs> Okay, I need another paper towel. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, hey, Sandra wants to know, can Bristol take much water? No. 
It cannot, and that's the downfall with it, but it does better than regular cardstock. So Bristol, the question was, Bristol, can Bristol take a lot of water? And no, it cannot, but with how I use it, which is for Tombow dual brush pens or Distress inks, you use very little water to get those inks um, liquidy and moving. You know, th this is a very controlled, this is not like really watercoloring. Yes, we're adding water to the inks and we're painting, so it's kind of like watercolor, but it's very controlled. It's very tight and you use very little water. So, so you're not gonna use it for like a color wash background no, or something No, like this like is that. not something you use to create those beautiful loose like florals or something. This is more of a tight control and, and it's okay for most of what we're doing with card making is we have smaller images. Mm -hmm. And so you don't need, you're not being really loose. But maybe if you have like a really big flower, maybe you don't want to color that with, um, well, some, Tombow is a pretty good one, but you may not want to, you, you might, it might be easier to use your watercolors for those, I think. Definitely will flow a lot better with watercolors. But I've, I haven't had anything where I was like, that's so warped, I can't keep use that, you know? But I, again, I don't use a lot of water with those Bristol papers. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go right to mixing. So I'm gonna show you mixing. So I'm sure that's where I know that's where I struggle the most, because it's a because it's it's like you're you're playing with it on camera. I'm trying to find where that little palette went. Ding dang! I put it away because I didn't think I was gonna need it. And now I need it. Pen, I'll just use the lid. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some. I'm gonna mix up this yellow, orange. You know, I might just use it from here because there's already lots of yellow in here. I think that was my fault. It's no worries. <laughs> I'm gonna even put it to use. I think that's enough, actually enough yellow. And I'm gonna get just a, oh look, we already have orange mixed up, so I'm gonna grab straight from here too. And just add oh, a That is a teeny tiny amount. Yeah, it was just a small amount. I think I'll add just a tiny bit. I just, you know, go slow. Just add a little bit at a time, you know, because. Can't take it back. You can't take it back. <laughs> I mean, you can start all over again. What the heck, who cares? You messed up, oh well, but. Yeah, just do a little bit at a time. This is kind of, um, this color is gonna be, and I can show up the, the purchase color wheel so you can kind of see what I'm thinking about. This is the color we're trying to make here, is this color. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a tan, tan-ish. Yeah, it does help. You know, not, not like a, I don't know, a little bit on the tan-ish side. Mm -hmm. I think I'm there. Marigold. Oh, Marigold, like Marigold, there we go, <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Somebody had a big Crayola box drawing up. Oh. <laughs> that was the best one. The hundred and <laughs> something yeah. colors. Put the sharpener in the back. <laughs> Whenever my mm. girls get some school supplies like that, I'm like always so like, can I just not let you use it? <laughs> you just buy an extra for you. <laughs> like I don't even want to use it. I just want to open it up. Smell it. Look maybe. at all those <laughs> sharp, sharp crayons. <laughs> Yeah, smell it. Smell I love crayons. the smell of crayons. <laughs> totally unrelated. But my daughter <laughs> stumbled onto somebody who was creating, I think we're right there. I'm going to add a tiny bit more orange. But my daughter discovered someone who was creating all this art with crayons. And I was like, oh man, I want to try. Like um, melting them and using yes, them for different things. With the hot knife? Have you seen that? <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. It's crazy. But I was like really in, ex it kind of inspired. I was like, wow, that looks like fun. Not hot. Go buy some crayons. Yeah, right. And just <laughs> melt them. <laughs> yeah, there are whole channels that are devoted to people using hot knives, melting crayons, and things. Well, so I'm gonna go in. You can see I keep going back and forth because I'm looking at it on paper, and it still looks. But I think that's pretty close. Yeah, that looks good. Pretty close to kind of this color, right? That's pretty close. Yeah. So we did it. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit more. And I think there's only a couple more we have to mix. I think just I think I just said three. I think I, that's what I remember counting. Okay, so let's I'll just go straight to mixing the next color because I'm sure that's what you guys are most interested in looking and watching. And let's see, the next one we have to mix up, so this is the light, or the yellow green, so I don't have to make that. I do have to make a blue green and that one, so those are the two more I have to make. So let's make, 
the blue green. Now the blue and the green are pretty, so I'm thinking less of the blue than the green mm -hmm. is what I'm thinking here. And I wish I had like, I, I think it's just darker. Gosh, I, I feel like I don't really know why how, why I'm thinking that, but that's just, maybe, maybe it's because I've just played around with paints enough. And I think this is good, just like why it is good to, um, you know, swatch out your colors. It's, it's, you're just getting practice and you're learning how the, the pigments are and how intense they are. I don't like how my green looks, but oh well. I didn't add enough water, so it looks really kind of chalky. I'm gonna mix up some green here, put some more into the palette so I have some more green to work with. Kind of just adding water, mixing it up with the paint, and then kind of soaking, get my brush full of it and kind of releasing it in the um, little cup here. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to the blue. I'm definitely gonna use more blue here than I used with that orange and yellow. Mm. Mix up some water with the blue. Too much. Let's see. And it, I can just tell that I definitely need more. So the green is a little bit stronger than I thought, so that's good. Again, I wanna be cautious. I don't wanna have to mix up a lot more paint than I need. And how do you know, other than looking at the store-bought chart, how do you know that you're kind of hitting the right combination so there? So that, that's really <laughs> tricky. And like I said, what I was talking about before is that you know, I, it's going to be like envision in your mind the best you can because there's really no other way to do it. A 50-50 mix of these. Like that's really, there is no, I mean a color wheel, you, you can go online too and look at color wheels online as well. You don't have to go purchase the color wheel. But either envision a 50-50 mix in your mind and, and aim towards that mm -hmm. or use a reference like a color wheel to kind of help you. But there is no, I wish there was a better way, like a, an easier way to do it, but there is no like, you know. When you guys purchase your watercolor sets, do you look for lots of different colors and hues to make sure you don't have to mix, or do you prefer to mix your own? I'm I just definitely curious. do. Do you? I do not <laughs> like mixing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, you like to mix your own? Okay. <laughs> well, uh, no. What I, what I, I like, well, personally, no. Can be honest, but I like, <laughs> but, but I think what's nice with the pre-mix is you know exactly the color it's going to be mixing. It's a little vague for me, because I feel like, I'm never Each gonna make time, that color twice, exactly. So it depends on the project. It's going to be a little different, right? I think I'm almost there, and I'm just I'm going. I'm trying to be perfect here. <laughs> trying to be perfect. It's probably close enough, but I feel like it just needs a hair more blue. Well, that's a pretty color. I think okay. This is my favorite color so far. Blue green. <laughs> it's the best, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the best. So I still think I'm a little heavy on the blue or on the green side. Now that I have it on paper, and I that's another way you can like mm. you can you can be um, more cautious and kind of swatch out to the side. You don't have to go straight to your color wheel mm -hmm. and go, oh no, that's mm -hmm. not the right color. You can be more cautious and go to the side. But I know I can kind of still mix with that mm -hmm. while it's on there, as long as I hurry <laughs> before it dries hurry. and don't talk too much. <laughs> Okay, that looks good. Well, That's and they better. look different when they're next to the colors That's than they were just on the white palette, That's too. That's very so true. It, I think that's part of why I was mm -hmm. like, oh, that's still too Wait green. Wait a minute. It's easier to tell right away. Ooh, that is a pretty color. That is really pretty. I'm a little dry again here. Let's see if I can cautiously add more water. I'm screwing everything up. Okay, that looks good. So oh, that's no. something else to consider, right? That you want to have enough in there so that you can color that whole five yes. years without having and to go back and that's what I was saying remix. earlier. It's really, it's that's when it's really important, like how much you mix up in your water usage, because you don't want to have to try to mix it up when you're three fourths of the way mm -hmm. done trying to make more. I'm, my problem here is I'm just a little dry, so I'm trying to 
Not add too much water, but add a little bit more because I don't want to. No, that looks awesome. Because my green here is the only one I'm that I've swatched out so far, far or painted out so far that I'm not too happy with with my paint to water ratio. It looks a little, well, scratchy and gritty. More so than the, much more so than the others. Okay. Ooh, that's so pretty. I really I like, like that, that color. We're live on Instagram. Oh, uh, hello hi. Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it's a painting day. It's a perfect day for painting. I know. <laughs> we, in we, we wish we could be outside <laughs> and painting in the gentle breeze. And <laughs> oh, the that's a good idea. Especially. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's cooling off a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I was doing, I'm, I'm feeling a lot better, actually. So now I'm going to move on to blue-violet. No, that one I wrote. I'm, I'm going to focus on the ones I have to mix. Red-violet right now. So I'll just use this little. He's nice and clean. Okay. And again, we kind of talked about this one a little bit before. I'm probably going to do, sorry, I'm going to put it over here. I probably am going to do mostly red with a small amount of violet. Okay. okay. Hi guys, Nina here. While mm -hmm. um, Shannon and Rebecca is helping us doing a little basic color wheel, we're trying to see how the Instagram live thing work. So that's what I'm doing <laughs> here. Uh, so if possible, next week we'll try to do an Instagram live on Friday. But right now it's just, I'm showing you guys a little bit and see how this thing work. Hi! Hi, Leah. I don't know how to say your name, but... <laughs> so, okay. the test 469 has a question. Okay. She says she wants to get the swatch set and color wheel set, but she's worried the words and letters will be too small. Oops. Okay. And I'm thinking they're like a size... Well, watch out for a November release. But she's she's more, more worried about the letters on there being small? Yeah. Does she want me to hold it up and see, maybe? Yeah, maybe if we can... I, oh. Okay, so we're, like a, we're answering questions. Like a size <laughs> 10 font? Whoa, or? I see. When I put my face in here, you guys joining us. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm standing right Nina here. Nina might know exactly the room, font size. Over there is our um, like, storage room. It's a pretty good room. size. I'm trying to think. Kind of the size of uh, most uh, Everything's so, so new to yes. us. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we were just trying to get the things ready. And this is just a test how we got. Okay. Let's see. All right. Okay. So I cheated and used the rest of your blue. I, I was going to suggest <laughs> that you do that. Thank you. I would have saved you. Well, I, did, I used all my. <laughs> well, just a tiny bit. Left. I'll, I'll, I'll just yeah. make it well. Um, next <laughs> week, we're going to try to do this. Um, Shannon and I are going to a retreat next week. So we might try to do this when we end the retreat and show you more about what we're doing and more about watercolors. Ooh. That's what I'm totally <laughs> into right now. It's more about watercolors. And um, <laughs> I mean waving and everything. Well, I I wish I could sit here and just talk to you guys forever, because <laughs> I could. Um, We're good. About watercolors and talking about the crafty stuff, and uh, <laughs> we got more people watching on Instagram now than on YouTube. <laughs> okay, so maybe for chanting, here's what we need to do: is to um, to be here. Um, oh, someone requests to be in my live video. <laughs> Maybe it's a uh, bump in there. <laughs> okay, so, all right, um, this is just a test to see that this thing can work. And the, uh, yeah, that's the trust that we have to mount all the lightings and the video things there. I can tell you I'm never going to get this color. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Ooh. Uh, oh, no, I'm contaminating. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bye, guys. I cannot... I, I was sort of interrupting there. <laughs> no, you're so fine. So watch us on YouTube right now. We're on YouTube right now, okay? Watch, watch us on YouTube. And the link is in the first posting in our, um, in our Instagram feed. If you want to go there uh, directly, it's youtube.com slash waffleflowercraft slash live. We're there. And if you just go to our uh, YouTube page, uh, uh, yes, YouTube page, you'll see the live thing right on top, and you can see us right there. Waving, I wish I could stay here forever with you guys, <laughs> but I have to go. <laughs> okay, bye. What, so what color are you working on now? Can so I'm making red violet now, and this is what the color wheel reference looks like. I think, let me make sure I'm on camera so you guys can see. And um, 
Oh gosh, I'm really off. I'm off salary, guys. So I'm um, mixing the red and purple right now. I think that's as, probably as close as I'm going to get. I'm not going to get this vibrant shade. I know that much because of the opacity of the paints again. So here's an example of if you had um, two paints, a good quality two paints, you could probably actually totally get this color. But we're going to get kind of a more muted version of this. And I think this is going to be the closest I can get. That's mm -hmm. pretty good. Looks like a nice whiny kind it of plummy color. So you can see, I'm going to put it here. Maybe you can see more of what I'm talking about. Like it's it's in it's like more like this mm -hmm. here. Oops, that's not on camera. It's more like this darker uh, shade here. But it's not because I'm being really heavy-handed. It's just because the opacity of the paints. I can't. It's kind of. Um, taking away the vibrancy of the color. And there's nothing I can do about it. Yes, that's yeah. mm -hmm. It's not bad though, it's still a pretty color. It's just, yeah, I'm just saying I can't get, I'm not gonna be able to get this vibrant shade. And that's just because. So there's a good example of it's gonna bring paint. Challenging for me. <laughs> Try it. Oh no, I'm just stealing the rest of hers. <laughs> <laughs> Waste not, right? That's right. <laughs> Okay, so that Ooh. one's done. That Isn't is our wheel pretty. so pretty? It's so pretty. <laughs> it's just fun making wheels. It's just so pretty. It's the rainbow thing. Um, yeah, exactly. I'm all about the rainbow right? thing. Oh. It's like rainbows are everywhere. Yeah, I could Bring do it. Bring on the rainbows. Rainbow projects all day long. <laughs> okay, now now I've done, the, like, well, I can't say I've done the hard work, but <laughs> I've done the mixing of the colors. Now <laughs> I have to move on to, I'm just going to fill in these. These are, we've got these pre um pre-mixed here or ready to go so I'm just gonna add water and start painting these last three sections of the pie but these are our still all the tertiary colors the third section or third um, part of the third group of colors that up and do a little bit more water okay if you put down a tertiary color that is pre-made and you're feeling like it's not kind of 50-50 between the two colors that you have down, would you just go and do your own? It, it's, for myself, I would. Um, for the color video, I'm trying to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to be able to create your own color wheels with what you have and not have to worry about color mixing. Well, you know, I still want you to, to ex have the joy of creating a color wheel because it's a very, very useful tool. It's a very useful tool. So I want you to be able to create a color wheel with what you have and have confidence in creating a color wheel. So I will, in the video, I will pick out lots of different media and tell you what colors I recommend to create, to get a yellow green, to get a blue violet or whatever, to, to have those 12 colors, to have your own color wheel. And then you can use that as a reference for creating harmonious color schemes with, with your media that you have, like especially distress inks is a really helpful one because not only do we use that for like ink blending or water coloring, but we also stamp with it too. So it's nice to know, you know, what color schemes work with those, like with wilted violet or with uh, peacock feathers, you know, those specific colors and not have to worry about mixing every time. Because color wheel doesn't have to be mixing. It doesn't have to be that. It can be a very helpful tool for color schemes. Okay. You should see our water here, guys. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about last week oh, how you guys were saying that that water stayed water nice and clean. Week. I don't know if you guys saw <laughs> if any people here from last week, but last week that nice um, Holbin watercolors, the water was so clear still, and oh my. <laughs> Let me help you. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I mean, we're still making it work. It's not a problem, but it's just like such a difference. It's funny. No, it is surprising. Mm -hmm. It is. They were so vibrant. They were more, well, just as, vi these are vibrant colors too. They are, but I mean, I don't know, I guess just. But I, yeah, I'm surprised because they were so vibrant, you would think the, the water would be the same. Yeah, that'd be heavy on the pigment. Yeah. That's a, that's a, see, you're, there's so much things you learn by swatching that you yeah. probably mm -hmm. wouldn't learn. You would be so focused and so worried about your project that you're painting and stuff that I think sometimes you, you're just not really opening your mind up to all the yeah. little lessons you can learn about your paint. At least know that that would be me. I'd be stressing about... Well, I'm still trying to figure out how I want to... 
organize swatches. And oh yeah, we've been thinking a lot about <laughs> a, a really good way to organize our swatches, a very universal way. And we've been thinking a lot about 2 by 2 because I know a lot of you guys, that's a good question. Are we, are we open for another question? Yeah. How do you how do you guys organize your your swatches? Do you do the two by two? You know, um, like it's like a, a bi you have a binder and has all these little slots. Which we have one here. Had one earlier. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's the coin. Yeah, it's the coin pockets. Pockets. Is that how you guys organize your swatches, or do you do more like journals, like stamp? Because I'm kind of in between. I have like a journal sort of, and I have all my inks kind of in there but I'm leaning towards now moving towards a two by two. So I'm just curious what you, how you guys organize your swatches. I'm sure you guys have really good systems, but probably better than me. <laughs> and I think some people I've seen put them on tags so that they have the hole at the tag and then they put them on a big binder clip. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've seen that, and but I haven't gotten around to doing that yet either. Well, Donna uses the coin pockets. Coin pockets. Yeah, I think I, that makes a lot of sense to me. I was kind of, I don't know, it seemed overwhelming to me at first to do, and I, I'm still a little overwhelmed because I have to like switch everything I have now kind of over, but maybe we'll do it Change slowly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I use the coin pockets for my ink swatches do for you? sure, yeah. But that's what I like about the the, the swatch stamp set or the um, color swatches stamp set. You can use... Ah, there, there we, we go. go. <laughs> so you can use that or even the... Uh, modify the the swatch stamp set to create. See, I don't know if you can see this one's slightly different, but this one will work too. The stamp here that's included in the color swatches stamp set. So, but you can organize your watercolors the same way, and I think I, I'm leaning towards if you want to know all how to swatch them, you need to watch our second last video when Shannon explains how she did everything and what the uh, watercoloring things are. Thank you, Nina, for new water. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. At your service. <laughs> Blue violet. Oh, that's this 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 one right here. Mm -hmm. The the cobalt reminds me of cobalt. That's how I think of it always. Yeah, it's a great color too. Like China um, ceramics pottery. Mm -hmm. Or I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Because you didn't have bread. <laughs> 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 so I get some mixed out here. Oh yeah, that the it's, is it Holland, the Danish, the blue and white China. Right. I mean, it is. Well, doesn't it like is, um. Like there's. Isn't there Russian pottery or something? Oh, Chet. Does everybody Chet? have like the twelve? The, what? The, the, the China blue. with the blue and the white. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. I don't, I don't thought it was Dutch. So which one is closer to cobalt blue to you? This one. Yeah. You mean this one, No, right? this no. one. That one. That's this yeah. one. Okay. Yeah, the other one's cyan. Yeah. Oh, okay. It, it's really... Learning about colors is so interesting. It's just... Because it's like... I think a lot of like the, the, term, the ner names you learn or how you learned it is really kind of regional too, I think, or at least your background or something. It's just interesting how people... Perceive color. I'm right. not sure that people know what Kobo is. <laughs> no, I don't think they do. I, and and that I say that because I know san sunshine. I shouldn't say that because not everybody knows. But I, I, I think of um, that's why I try to give some examples, like the the pottery that's white and blue. That mm -hmm. blue is a cobalt blue. And sunshine and I both have like a ceramics background. That's how I know. So I'm not only talking to What's that? What is, ask us a funny question. A funny question? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have a funny question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's What's see. everybody going to be for Halloween? Oh, that's a good one. It's when we just, just when we come back on the, when is Halloween? The 31st. Oh, Shannon, okay. do you dress up with your kids or just your kids? Okay, so gosh, I'm going to tell something very embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Here's funny. <laughs> My us. husband and I, we used to, not not, not so much now because we're, we're old and we're tired, but we used to make our own costumes. And <laughs> we used to go and, and like real serious, like, I'm trying to think of a reference that you guys might know because he made a Bioshock costume once. He always goes crazy. He makes the craziest costumes and I kind of just just 
You're along for the ride. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I do. I work hard on my costumes, but there's no way I can. Um, uh, his enthusiasm level. His well, <laughs> he makes like whole suits, you know, like out of cardboard. And it's really <laughs> like he made a basically. It's not a. Uh, it's a. He didn't make a. Gosh, what was it? it? Wasn't a Star Wars character, but it was basically one of those like full body cardboard suits. And um, so we used to make costumes quite. We were pretty serious about it, That's like awesome. almost almost Comic Con kind of level. That's awesome. But uh, <laughs> we haven't done it in a long, long time now. And and you know how lame I am now <laughs> about our costumes for the girls at the store. <laughs> well, you know what. <laughs> when you're both working parents, <laughs> that's just kind of how it has to go sometimes. Do they have a request about what they want to be? We went to Costco, so they just kind of looked at everything, and um, we were so excited. We bought them, like, in August, so we've had them forever, oh. and I, I wouldn't let them wear them. <laughs> <So> <laughs> they're still hanging up in their closets. I might well, let them wear them now. Sometimes they don't last terribly no, long, so I, it's yeah. better to hold on to them for... And, um, my one daughter is go is going to be Batgirl. Cool. Yeah, and it's really cute. My youngest, she's four, and my oldest is going to be. <sighs> my oldest does stuff. I swear, sometimes just to kind of like she knows I don't want her to do it, and so she does it anyway. Yeah, and I can't. <laughs> and I can't like. The bigger a deal I make it, like, right. the bigger deal it is. Dig in and your so heels. I'm just like, <laughs> okay, fine, whatever you can be. This cost is whatever you want to be for Halloween, fine. So she ended up picking a costume. She doesn't even know what this is. It's some JoJo character, some character for Nick Nickelodeon. Hmm. And there were so many little cute costumes <laughs> she could have been, but she picked this JoJo character, and it's okay. But one good thing is it looks kind of 50s, kind of. Oh, cute. Yeah, so it's not not terrible, but I'm still kind of like, everybody's going to think you're JoJo, this character, and you don't even know who she is. <laughs> I don't even know who she is, you know. And, but she thinks it looks like a rock star, so that's what she wants to be, is like a rock star. My girl, my she's six going on like 16. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> But she's really crafty, so we have that there in common. Yeah. Little she's being creative and But she she doesn't want to do the what the things that I tell her to do. <laughs> <laughs> like she has her you can't own use child labor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean like she if I give a suggestion, she'll be like, hmm. That's nice. No, <laughs> she has her oh, own vision. Yeah, like cool. she yeah, she's her own she's very much her own person, which is a very, very good thing. I just I'm <laughs> always like st taken aback by it. I, I feel like I was a, as a kid much more kind of like, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> you know, at least that's what I remember. <laughs> My mom might have different stories. <laughs> I think, especially with oldest girls, the idea is to, when they ask you which one, pick the one that you know. They don't they want. Don't, yeah. Or you don't want. <laughs> that you don't want because they're going to pick that one. I'm so. going to have to go. I'm going to yeah. have to do that. <laughs> I'm going to come to you for a lot of Because <laughs> mine is 13 now, so I've <laughs> been down that road <laughs> you <know>. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm done. And well, it's that's so, pretty. so pretty. I like how Rebecca's is so much so lighter. lighter. <laughs> 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 it's, it's like a wash. I'm right. just so much heavy handed, and I don't think it's necessarily a good thing. No, I honestly think I it gets me it. into trouble a lot of times, but... <laughs> you definitely get more bright colors, but it, if, if we, you, this is something that you guys can't really see on camera, I don't think, but mine's more chalkier looking than uh, Rebecca's. Rebecca's has a nice, more transparent, which is what I like, more transparent color. Mine's a little bit chalkier, but it is, looks more vibrant on mm -hmm. camera. That's mm -hmm. so pretty. That's not what I was trying for, that's just because I'm really heavy handed. You okay. can tell. <laughs> you can tell, huh? <laughs> Okay, so now that we've got the color wheel done, it does need to dry a sec. Well, yeah. Yeah, it needs to dry. It needs it to dry. dry as well because it doesn't stain. Oh, okay. You have so to clear your color every w in between colors. Mm -hmm. You have to clear your. Oh, brush. clean your brush. Okay. So maybe you could take this opportunity to explain, oh, explain glazing, glazing to me. Yes. <laughs> okay. So what I. Is yes. Glazing? What is glazing? Yes. <laughs> so I didn't. When Nina started going on this watercolor adventure, <laughs> she was talking about glazing too, and I was kind of like, glazing? Well, you know, the only glazing I know is with ceramics, <laughs> and this is not this is not ceramics glazing. Um, glazing is kind of a different way to think about color mixing. Probably most color mixing that you would think of right away when I say color mixing is what you've seen me do, which is take two colors and literally mix them together 
in a well and create a new color. Glazing is another way to mix colors where you lay down one, so you're still gonna have two colors. You lay down your first color of paint. So you paint a section. So like right here, like just for example, I painted it orange, let it dry, and then with my second color, I'll mix it up and paint it on top. So we're mixing the colors, but by layering, and that is called glazing. Mm. And it's pretty much only a watercolor thing because you definitely need that transparency of the paint to get those two to see a new shade. So we'll see how it will, we'll, like we mentioned before, this is more opaque paint. We'll still get, we will still get uh, a new shade by layering one um, paint on top of the other, but it will not be as um, vibrant as if we were to use a really transparent watercolor, because um, this is more opaque, but we'll still definitely do it. And I like glazing because um, otherwise I'd have to mix up. So I'm going to be glazing each ring here of the color wheel. So that's one ring. That one I'm going to do red. The next one I'll do yellow. And then the third ring I'll do blue. So the primary colors. And then the last two rings I'm going to do white and black. Excuse me. And so, and that's going to create five new shades by layering those new colors on top of those original hues. Okay, so I hope that made sense. <laughs> that does. That's really cool. So basically you get so many more colors than what you have right in front of you. And I think the nice thing about glazing is that I think it's more consistent than mixing because if you're just mixing, like if you're mm. just using straight from your palette, like I'm going, like which is what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a red for straight from the palette and go over all these colors. So like red on top of this yellow, you know, it's this yellow right here. So I know, like if I were ever, if I really liked that color, I know exactly how to recreate. There's no, it only be requiring more mixing because of these, these a few new shades that I had to mix up mm -hmm. for you guys on camera. But otherwise, if, if you're using two colors straight from your palette, it's gonna be really easy to recreate it because you're not mixing, you're just laying that straight color right over the other straight color once that first color is dried. So I hope that makes sense. Very cool. And it works really well for distress inks, <laughs> which is I like that technique for that yeah, as well. Yeah, it might not work, but we already gone through this for one hour, so if it doesn't work, maybe we'll cover something oh, I, later for the overlap. Try it should work. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll try it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we're experimenting here. Okay. We're learning. Okay. So I'm going to go straight to red. I'm going to go right to it now. I think it's dry enough. While Shannon is going straight to red, you want to tell us if you guys dress up for Halloween? Is it just the kids in your life or do you guys dress up? Um, we, I haven't dressed up in a while, but we were doing kind of family costumes for a oh, while and that so was a lot of fun, fun, I have to say. But now they've all gotten to the point where they don't want to do what I want to <laughs> do. So, <laughs> those kids, I'm like, hmm. Don't they know so I'm the one year we did the Star Wars family. Oh, how fun. And what else did we do? Oh, we did a whole Harry Potter. There's four of us. So we just, you know, each choose a character and kind of, um, get costumes. Usually we buy costumes. I My mom is amazing seamstress. She can sew Halloween costumes lickety split, but she is not here. She's in New York, so <laughs> we and I can't sew to save my life. So we just buy the costumes. And that started to get kind of expensive for the yeah. whole family. <laughs> so once they were like, I don't want to be a Star Wars person, then I was like, all right, never mind. <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> But how about you guys? Do you all dress up as a family? Do you dress up just as adults? Do you guys go to Halloween parties? Or do you just pass out candy in your neighborhood? Do you still trick or treat? I, I, I feel like a lot of kids don't trick or treat anymore. Trick or trunk, then yeah. <laughs> we still trick or treat in our neighborhood. <laughs> trunk. Everybody goes to a parking lot and you basically you have the candy so they trick or treat and they go to car to car. Oh. Yeah. I think I think the whole point is it it's a lot safer. It is. Which I I they're totally not running get. around in the streets and the yeah. same people, same candy. Yeah, well, we, <laughs> same people. Same in candy. our neighborhood, <laughs> so we go trick or treating still. And in our neighborhood, there is this guy who. So this house has a 
it's a door that has like a little opening, a tiny little door inside of it. So like, so I'm, cool. it's, I've never seen, I don't think I've ever seen any other one like it, like in Wizard of Oz. <laughs> so <laughs> one, we go to the door and we knock at it and he opens up that little door and he has a little <laughs> spider on his hand, a little spider puppet, and he pops out. <laughs> He's scared. Piper, so oh. <laughs> So she dropped her candy <laughs> and ran away. <laughs> she was so scared. I think she was two or three, oh, so she was scary. little. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, luckily she recovered, but she was kind of like, I don't, I don't know about this. <laughs> like, this, this is supposed to be fun? Or yeah, like, what, what's wrong with you people? <laughs> Why would you purposefully scare me? But now, like, and I should have known better. Like, he did it the year before, and she was too little to, like, even, like, even phase her, really. And, um, but now I warn her every year because he does it every <laughs> year. Every year so he cute. does this. And I think it's fine if you remember, but if you don't remember, it's right. really scary <laughs> for a little one. But sometimes she doesn't even go up there. She's like, uh, no. <laughs> I remember. I'm not I going up there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pass. <laughs> I'll just take one of my sisters. So I want to point out, too, real quick. Um, I am cleaning um, after I swatch a section. So I've got my red here still. i got my little palette mixed up with my red. And I'm painting over this first ring section here of each hue, each color. But when I'm doing this, I know that the paint underneath is getting reactivated mm -hmm. and it's mixing on my brush. So I do not want to take this brush now and go ne to my next color. I'm going to contaminate this. So I'm going to clean my brush, dry it, and then pick up some more, maybe a tiny bit more water. Otherwise we're going to end up with a lot of brown, right? Yeah, <laughs> a lot of mud. <laughs> and go back to the to the new color. So that's just important to note. And that's definitely something you want to do. Even if you have transparent colors, you definitely want to just just, just to be careful. Because this is the whole point of this exercise is to kind of, you know, to learn and see what it is. You don't want to mess up kind of your learning by contaminate. Especially, it would be more true too if we were jumping around here and got a little blue on our brush and took some of that blue color over to the yellow. Ooh, that'd be a mess. Do these rings have a name, or like, is there in the color chart? Like, how does it? Uh, no. <laughs> so, because what we're doing is we're kind of creating this. We're doing. So this, the die here, that we'll cut out once we're done. We'll cut a nice white, um, out of white cardstock. Just card cut stock. one out and show Yeah, one. there we go. And um, it will cut out those sections, and so you can see. Uh, let's see. Where, oh, I put it on the floor because I was knocking them over. So you would purposefully use a nice. Thank you. Okay. Maybe two, one, four of the <laughs> Do you do two at a time? Will that work? No. That's probably too much. Uh, <laughs> one at a time. I'm gonna run it through the Gemini here. Yeah, free advertising. They didn't pay us. <laughs> <laughs> We really do like Jim. We do. Yeah. It's nice not to have to crank things. You just need to catch it though on the other end. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna dump Especially on the floor. Especially since this is a big thing. A yeah. Big one. yeah. Okay. Ah, it's so beautiful how it die cuts. It's such a clean cut. It is, and it puts the beautiful little um, uh. score lines in the top here, which is where I'll paint red, so I know. <laughs> So I don't forget when I look at my color wheel later that that this this is anything and you see in here is the hue. Let's see if I can put it on here, not messing it up. Mm -hmm. This is the hue, the original color, and then in here I will paint red. I'll paint it on here right now, so it's not as confusing. So we know that anything that I'm in looking that in that window has yeah. got red added to it. Yes. Okay. And there's little score lines on these. And we'll add this later, obviously, once we are done painting the whole color wheel. And then I'll paint. Um, what's my doing Halloween next? Halloween is not a popular topic. That's no. okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a U.S. thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It definitely, yeah, it is. definitely is. 
know What's that? There's a couple Canadians watching. <laughs> oh, do, do they do Halloween in Canada? Well, they even do it in. S well, I do. No, they do it in England. I think really? they do it there. Yeah, I'll cut you one real quick, Rebecca. We've got okay. it away. But it is really a U.S. Uh, my understanding it is a really a U.S. holiday, mainly. But I know a lot of card makers, even if they're from other um, countries and they don't really celebrate it, they still like to make Halloween cards because they're fun. Halloween <laughs> is so stinking fun. Yeah. <laughs> and it's such a, you know, if, if you don't celebrate, or if you don't do Halloween, there's really like no other time, like when other time would you do like a spooky kind of card? You know, it's such a different kind of theme for any of the, anything else. So it's kind of fun. Even Day of the Dead is a US thing. So Sandra, she lives in British Columbia, they do Halloween. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta make sure I gotta be it. fast. <laughs> You'd be surprised how quickly it moves through there. <laughs> Catching. I might have to use the die pick to pop it out now. Well, you use a pick really sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, it could be a weapon. <laughs> Pin tool. Okay. <laughs> okay, now I'm back to this. Okay. How is it going? Do you feel like it is? I, I really like it. I think okay. it's doing a good job. I think I'm impressed. I, I mean, you're definitely getting new colors. It'll be interesting when we get to darker um, areas how it looks. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah. You be doing okay. <laughs> I'm just watching. I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> All right. If you don't do it, you won't All right. have questions. Right. Okay, so now is this is this dry enough? Do you think? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll switch to the littler brush. Oh yeah, that's that's a probably good idea. I don't know. So now I'm actually at. We haven't talked about complementary colors, but across the color wheel, across from green, is red. So red and green are complementary colors. And so this is where it should get a little muddy. <laughs> Complementary colors, when mixed, will be kind of brown. And it is a little bit, it looks really like iron to me. That's what that color looks mm -hmm. like, like iron. I was going to say blood, but iron mm -hmm. is like much better. Like a rusted iron? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. So when you're trying to come up with a brand new color combination or a new color combination for you, like something that you just want to see, will these three colors work out? Like how do you, do you pick complementary? Do you pick, uh, how do you start looking at the wheel and thinking oh. about color theory? So I almost always, which I learned because I don't use the color wheel normally. That's mm -hmm. why I told you, I admitted that truth <laughs> in the beginning. And, um, so I default, I think of, I've been thinking more of colors as arranged like a rainbow, you know, in order, still still in order as they would be on a color wheel, but instead Wait, I think we're oh, back on now. Oh, okay. Are we back on? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. That was my mistake. Uh, when I do, when I did the color wheel, that's when I learned. When I started working with the color wheel more, and I was like, oh gosh, I always pick colors that are right next to each other, which is a, a color scheme, a harmonious color scheme, but <laughs> it's an yes. analogous, which I think is really. Really useful color scheme if you if you aren't using we'll that. Talk about that in future yeah. videos. <laughs> that's the actually gonna be my next video, but that's a really um, that's what I use typically use for color scheme is those colors right next to each other in the color wheel because they blend well, they mix mm. well, that they're pretty safe. 
and mix up some more red. Do you guys have go-to color combinations that you use all the time in your paper crafts or do you like to be more adventurous with color picking or? Well, we ask, where do you usually go to color inspiration? Yeah, where do you go for color inspiration? I go to Pinterest. Mm -hmm. I'll just type in, like, if I'm doing a fall, fall, fall card, I don't know why I can't talk today. If I'm doing a fall card, I'll just go into Pinterest and I'll type fall color palettes. And then I'll look around. Um, one of my favorite kind of color palettes of fall, for fall is purples and reds. I really like that. With some, maybe some tans and browns. Okay, we're making progress here. I only got one more to go. And you see how the red on red just made it darker. For the, it's a little bit darker. And it did a pretty good job with the, and I had a little bit more, I think I watered it down too much. The red on top of the other colors, you can see. But well, that's probably because it's so opaque. So I shouldn't have been surprised by that because it's so opaque. Okay, now we're gonna move on to yellow. I'm gonna mix up a whole bunch. So, well, we're gonna go with it. We should have done yellow first. Oh, it's out. Sorry. It's <laughs> alright. Why should you have done yellow first? I should have done yellow first because now my water is um. so pink. <laughs> That's a good question. I should have done yellow. I think it's still clear enough that it's not gonna make this too peachy, but it is kind of kind of red right now or kind of pinky. So that's what I should have done. I should have started with my lightest, which was yellow. So we'll have to get some new water definitely when we move on to um, white. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Shannon. There we go. Okay, we're gonna start. I'm gonna start right here with red again. And Alex clean? says um, she Googles images for color combos, scene building and shape references. Oh, mm. that's interesting. And she's uh, join, uh, taking a watercolor, cla watercolor class and starting to learn how to mix colors. That's mm. great. It's a good skill. <laughs> uh, Sunshine says her favorite is the 50s Fista wear color. Yes. <gasps> oh, I love that. Oh. Oh. It was like the aqua, the red, yeah. the so you wear. have your favorite um, combo. That those you are kind of like those kind of like it's just. I it, don't is know. that Mexican kind of? No, it's sort of like. Um, I need to Google it. So, so, I don't know. When you think of the fifties, it's sort of like in diners, like it's the red, like the lipstick red. Right. The aqua. You can still get like they have. They're making it green. still fiesta yeah. wear. Yeah. yeah. Just with not without the lead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> lead free, please. Like, you know, That's better. I like not to get lead poisoning. <laughs> yeah. Not, those are more of the modern ones, but the okay. blues. I'll put 50s in there. Mm -hmm. we'll Vintage or retro. Yeah. Just aqua and red are just like, two of my favorite. I love aqua and red. Together. Oh. <laughs> aqua and red. Mm hmm. <laughs> I mean, this just had a revelation about that. <laughs> no, because I remember some paper collections had that. Yeah. And people were talking, it's so vintage, I don't like it. But some people love it because they love the yeah, color combo. Yeah, sort of that. Because for paper collections, it's all about color. Mm -hmm. I always like the ones with aqua and red because I feel like you can use them for boys and girls, those paper oh. collections, and I have one of each, so <laughs> it's very good. convenient for me when it's not all pink or all blues and greens. I reckon I should do a, uh, how to use, uh, use stamp sets for scrapbook pages. 
Okay. Yeah. Maybe it'd be helpful. Yeah. Because mm. the time there's just little images. Uh -huh. like Do you images? have scrapbooked anything with the stamps? Yeah. Okay. Show me first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But that's not aqua. That's sort of like, mm. yeah, like in these. Yeah, but like this. Oops. Mm, yeah, that's not aqua. But that's, that's an aqua. Olive in there. It's like a cobalt. I think I know what you mean. I remember Pebbles Pebble Hills. Orange. Yeah. Something like that. Kind of yeah, so it's. it's I, I will consider yellow is like Mexican weird. inspired. Some of it is, yeah. yeah. But I think it's just because the oh, opacity of it. It's yeah. like just it's kind of sitting mean. on the top and this, this, so we're, I think this is where we're running into where you can really see that glazing works better. Put too much water on there because you lift whatever's down below together and it's going to be really bad so just go over it quickly so you try yours Rebecca with the yellow because uh -huh. it's so much lighter and okay you see what the difference is it might be better on the lighter one okay less pigment to pick up mm -hmm. wow we still have all those people with us <laughs> thanks for staying with oh. us guys um what's that? so Alice asks what color palette we're using it's a cheap one we carry in our store <laughs> for starters. There are eight um, there are eight colors in them and they are eight dollars. So it, it came with a oh. palette. What are you laughing about? Don't we get in trouble. Okay. <laughs> Yellow's done. Now we're on to our last primary color, just blue. You can really see how the yellow is kind of sitting on top of the surface. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm gonna <sighs> mix up a lot of blue here so I don't have to keep going back to it. Quiet today. Yeah, it's focusing. Oh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Last week we had a few more chatting. Oh, I'm folks. sorry. No, you're okay. fine. Yeah. Maybe they're watching it on their phones. And it's well, they can really see, maybe. I have a question. Yes. So, Alex, are you Alex Wood on Instagram? I love your creations. <laughs> I think that's her from a photo. So every time I cut scene, you guys got quiet. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I scared We're them waiting all. for the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alex, let us know. She says yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I like that question. Sunshine just helped us with another question. Yeah, Are you on a computer, phone, or tablet? Oh, that's a good question. Repeat it, please. <laughs> Are you guys watching from a phone, a tablet, on a laptop? While you're exercising. <laughs> <laughs> Are you multitasking right now? <laughs> well, Alex is on her phone. <laughs> really quiet. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, we're not the two what are we hours. doing right now? So, so I'm working with. So, I think maybe, like you guys said, maybe if if you're having trouble covering up then go with it well no see I don't know see even with this one this green is not bad I still feel it's like it's pooling a little bit yeah I think you're really they're not they're kind of really sitting on top of each other instead of you really need that transparent glazing works so much better with with transparent um, paints you're gonna really create more vivid shades but definitely clearer like easier to tell like a new color right now these they're still drying 
But I'm noticing, That's true. Um, especially with some of my yellow, it's just really sitting on yeah. top of the surface. Like it's not, it's, it, and it's not, that's not thing I did wrong, it's just because it's it's more opaque, and so you can really see the paint sitting on top of the paint underneath it, instead of this layer of clear color creating a new shade, kind of like, um, like tint colored glass. If we were to put two pieces of colored glass over each other, that's kind of how glazing should work, and it really needs transparent, it works a lot better with transparent colors, mm. or transparent paints. So Sandra's watching on her TV, but commenting on her iPad. Oh, oh. I remember Sandra. <laughs> Hi, Sandra. <laughs> Hi, Sandra. I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the pros. Last time, Sasha and I were doing. So we asked, "Where? What are they doing?" They give us very professional answers. I don't even know. <laughs> so I think a lot. And one person was saying she started with YouTube, right? Was it Shannon? Was she with us? But she says she started with YouTube and doesn't want to move anywhere else. Oh, she yeah. started. Oh, yeah. okay. So, <laughs> her. so <laughs> the son is on her phone in the kitchen making a homemade sourdough starter. Oh, that sounds so good. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and sourdough bread sounds delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Her hands are covered in glue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is our, our address for the office? So if anybody wants to send goodies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not above soliciting. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did about something to you. Well, you, I've never projected anything on my TV. Do you guys have a TV? <sighs> we do. <laughs> I can't even imagine you guys taking time to watch anything on TV. We do. We watch the whole Game of Thrones. Oh. The seven seasons. The seven seasons. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can tell. So this red that everybody was commenting was so much lighter. I really like the way that the one looks with on. the yellow. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm struggling over with the cobalt a little bit, and like you said, it still hasn't dried, but. The blue was better than the yellow for me, but um, yeah, the yellow is really kind of splotchy. But once you have the cover on top, you'll be a lot better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, the cover, the, the cover will hide a lot of sin. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna move on to white now. This should be interesting. Yeah, that's funny, because what are you guys doing when you're watching us live, right, besides um, besides making cookie dough, <laughs> <laughs> sourdough? I get ready and I watch live things, I'll be getting ready, something where I, yeah. Um, Sometimes I craft while I'm watching somebody else live. Yeah? Yeah, I, I like to just have it on in the back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, Alex is doing a bunch of ink blending. Oh, nice. Cool. Perfect. I love <laughs> ink blending. Yeah, we wish you guys could be crafting with us. Yeah. You know, that's something fun. And join us if you could. Type in the live chat. <laughs> Fussy, Fussy cutting. cutting. Yeah. Uh, Fussy cutting, that's a good That's thing. a good thing to have somebody <laughs> chatting in the background, keeping you company. <laughs> I actually, I like to fussy cut sometimes. I do not. <laughs> right. I, I do not. <laughs> that's why I love well, I think it's like the, it's the great... You know, craft divider. You it is. Like it or you don't. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's no in between with fussy cutting yeah. either. So it hurts my uh, ankles. So. I like though the way the die cuts. The cut. I like the beveled edge of a die. So I prefer mm. the look of um, die cut images. But mm -hmm. I like. I don't mind fussy cutting. Mm. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> Sandra says she's terrible in fussy cutting. I am too. <laughs> I have no patience. <laughs> I think that's why I'm struggling here. <laughs> when she says she's awful in uh, cutting, it's sunshine, okay? Sunshine just typed in. She says she's awful. In <laughs> <laughs> that's sunshine. You're good at fussy cutting. I just don't like it. <laughs> no, <according> to Nina. <laughs> <laughs> oh. it's, not, it's not my favorite. No. 
Nope. That's why I like one layer cards when there's no dice. There you go. Like, mm. <laughs> oh, my white's doing the same thing. But I guess I shouldn't be surprised. It's like the light colors, like the yellow, like the white. It's kind of doing the same thing. It may be that it's not all the way dry. Eh, my yellow's dry. Well, true. My white's not dry. But anywhere it kind of pulled, where I'm having, I don't even know if you guys can see this on camera. But anywhere up, it. Up my, my show better. Yes. And move over this way a little bit. There we go. Yeah. So anywhere it kind of pulled, is it's like a, a splotch of yellow. And I can tell, I have a feeling right here where this white is, it's gonna be the same thing. It's gonna be like a little splotch of white. It's mm -hmm. not like, and, and that's just because the, it's, op it's more opaque. It's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> like we would get better, we'd, we'd have more of a new hue if we were to mix these. So like if you do have opaque colors, it doesn't mean you can't, um, you know, experiment with color and get new colors, just glazing is probably not the way you want to do your color mixing. You okay. want to literally mix your colors together like we did when we first started. And I mean, remember we got those, look at those beautiful colors we got by color, m color mixing with um, the blue green, like by actually taking the green, actually taking the blue and literally mixing it in the little well. So instead of filling in the whole pie, if we're having these kinds of issues, we could just fill in that first one and then mix for the second yes. one? Yes. Yep, that's what you would do. So if you're not doing glazing, glazing is, I think, the easier way to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, uh, like you're, we're learning here, it doesn't work so well for opaque paints. It's just, you're not getting, you're not really getting the best results out of the paint that you possibly could get. Because these paints could do more clear, vibrant colors if we literally mix them together instead of what we're doing right now, which is layering having one dry and then putting in a new one on top. I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know it's too sturdy, right? Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, getting <laughs> I'm getting close. I'm getting close. I only have um, the white and the black left to do. Oh, okay. So Alex says she does fussy cutting at her daughter's softball practice. Oh, oh. see, that's smart. That's yeah. She gets funny looks from other parents. <laughs> 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 I sometimes do coloring, but I get very into the games. I can't help Aww. it, I, and I don't yell or anything. But <laughs> but I get very excited, so <laughs> it's hard for me to focus. On. That's hard for me to multitask. But when I'm crafting, I can have people chatting in the background and look up and see what they're doing. Um, but my daughter's games. I know it sounds silly. She's 13 and volleyball, it's not like volleyball. it's Olympic or anything. And she plays soccer a lot too. Um, but I just get really into any competitive sport where kids are just putting their little hearts Aww. out there, you know? It's hard not to get excited. Shannon, you're now in the age for practices yet, right? Uh, not yet that I've been thinking about getting Piper involved in something. I've been thinking she needs. Like, I played sports, mm -hmm. so I think sports are a good influence. Um, what do you do? I played basketball when I was in school. Oh, mainly you're by tall. <laughs> mainly by default. <laughs> 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 I did enjoy it, though. I was not very um, good, but I did enjoy it. Hey, okay. as long as it's fun, they're getting some exercise. I don't enjoy any kind of sports. <laughs> it's good, too, for um, scholarships. You, you put that on, you know, like extracurricular activities are always really good for you're scholarship. You're very practical. Oh, what, you, what were you thinking for her? What were you thinking well, for Well, dance? I don't think, well, she would I probably love dance. Is that the same <laughs> thing? <laughs> 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 wow. 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 There's nothing wrong with dance. <laughs> Shannon dance played dance basketball, is her daughter will want, yeah, dance it is. Is expensive. Especially oh. out here. Maybe that's what we do, because yeah. I know she would really like it, and I don't, I, I'm not necessarily opposed, it's just, I don't know, it's so expensive. <laughs> And they have the recitals, and uh, she was doing dance. She did do dance for a little while, and that's kind of how I know it was expensive. And it was so cute. Yeah, but uh, it was so cute. So Alex like says she only crafts at practices, not games. Oh, uh, there you go. See, wow. <laughs> she says she I don't gets go to practices. Very into it until the umpire told me to be quiet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. See, it is very exciting. It's hard to like control your excitement. <laughs> I fully understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hate um, sports, but I was in our school's volleyball team. Mm -hmm. Oh, what, what is the other like? Um, that's not tennis, oh, but it's the other kind. Batman. Oh, Batman. That's fun. Yeah, 
also in the school's dance team too. Oh, oh. okay. Nina, dancer. Yeah. yeah. All right. She some moves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't enjoy them. But it, it's kind of like an honor to be chosen to be on the school team. Oh. Mm. So yeah, I can work. Yeah. I've been working since three. <laughs> <laughs> I don't doubt that for a second. <laughs> I think the other thing about team sports, especially for kids, is it teaches them how to work together and to respect each other. I think that has always been, uh, my husband has always coached soccer since they oh. were really little up until now that they're playing at school. and. You know, he has just been such a good influence on so many different kids, teaching them really sportsmanlike behavior and just good attitudes, whether you win or lose. And mm -hmm. so I think those are really yeah, positive it, messages. It teaches them about losing mm -hmm. and not being the winner. Sore all the losers all yeah. the time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, now I'm, <laughs> I think that's a good practice now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, but nobody loses anymore. <laughs> they do, everyone they, gets everybody a gets trophy. to participate. Yeah, it's like, okay. <laughs> Not in middle school. I mean, when they were younger, they all got those little trophies or whatever. And honestly, it it wasn't. I didn't feel like it discouraged competition or anything like that. It just kind of, just it was a fun thing for them at the end of the season. And you know, so is like winning or losing important to them? Like, do they feel competitive? They do, yeah. Kids are, uh, my cousin, my <laughs> nephew <laughs> will let you know, he'll let you know how important winning is. It, it, oh. Kids are innate, they, they grow, they start off, and when I was a teacher too, you, you really know. have to, they, they want to win, they want to win. You right. have to teach them how to, even in a school setting where you're just playing little games. You know, especially with when in in the, the special needs area I was That's teaching. That's human nature, they haven't learned to dis <laughs> disguise. Yeah, <laughs> but people want to win. You want to win, or also just learn the sport. I think that's oh. kind of more important is just learning the skills and the techniques and yeah. stuff like that. That's all not all about just winning because if it's all about winning, then you put the same kid out there all the time. And you know, for oh, a rec sport, especially not maybe a competitive sport, but for a rec sport, it was important to let everybody play mm -hmm. and kind of learn. So it's Good about lesson. teamwork. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Paper Made Social says she wishes they gave out scholarships for crafting. Right? <laughs> oh, I am right there with you. Yeah. <laughs> Why? That would have been awesome. That well, would have been awesome. Just for yourself an artist. Just for yourself an artist. And then Alex says, do other parents give dirty looks when you, your kids make mistakes in the game? Oh, I don't like that. Oh, yeah. no. Do they do that? That's they terrible. do. They really do. And that's the one downside to sports is the oh, other parents, no. honestly. <laughs> <laughs> for the most part, you know. Well, you got to learn teamwork too. Well, <laughs> I try, I really do. But I, you know, my thing is like I encourage every good behavior. So anytime somebody does something good, I cheer their name and the good. I'm like, good job or good, you know, whatever. Um, but I hear other parents especially sometimes if somebody makes a mistake, I'm like, they are five or nine or 10 or whatever, or whatever. you know? They're not... They're not professional they're, players. They're that and their own kids, right? Yeah. It's not someone else's Well, no, kids. sometimes they no. yell at other people's kids too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did saw a video sometime on Facebook that someone else was yelling at one, someone else's kid. Yeah. yeah. Did you see that video? No. It was so terrible. It's sad though. Yeah. It should definitely not be about that. Well, then I worried how their own kids were treated at right. home. At home when, yeah, right. that's when absolutely no true. Or how their kids right. are treating other kids. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's that's bad. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. 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 oh this took a dark turn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so how is this color going? And I'm done! <laughs> yeah. So now I'm just going to add my colors real quick to here. That will be just, I'm just going to add the yellow, blue, and black. Get a little bit of water here. <laughs> they dried up. Alex says parents are worst. <laughs> <laughs> they are. <laughs> you need to learn teamwork. You need to learn to deal with those parents. Oh, I <laughs> deal with them all right. <laughs> <laughs> They're not getting in fights every every week or no. every game, so you're dealing with them. You just kind of <sighs> roll your eyes and <laughs> try not to let them bother you. Right. Yes, that's the hard part. Am I bothering you this? No. Oh, okay. I'm just doing it. <laughs> Making a slave. Yeah. 
Okay. So Rebecca, are you giving up? Yeah, I kind of gave up. Why? <laughs> Cause I couldn't, I couldn't get up, up. Oh, sorry. So I was having trouble with the yellow, and that's where I sort of started to. So the color all sits on top. Yeah. Where are we? There we you go. Have to use the palette with the holding. There we go. Right there, that one. Uh, the, we might try different color media later and see how it works. I do notice those ones doesn't glaze well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But maybe Shannon can make it work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're hoping. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it's done. Let's just say that. <laughs> it's done. Well, I find I really like distress sticks. I mean, I like painting with them. Mm -hmm. I think they just, they just. They're so light. They're, they're air, almost error proof. The only thing is that the amount of water, I think, with distress inks is the problem. But mm -hmm. other than that, they're pretty much error proof. You know, you, they're going to be transparent no matter what. Mm -hmm. We could, I could have gotten more transparent with even these opaque ones. <laughs> But I'm so heavy handed. Okay. I'm going to die cut this out. Sweet. I think this is dry enough. Yeah, this is dry enough. Bassett469 says she sent an Instagram message with a photo of her oh. sourdough experiment. Oh. Get it? Oh. oh. <laughs> Okay, I did Now it. you're really going to make us hungry. We're going to have some. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, here we go. Yes. Oh. It's like, I don't know where our tape went. Oh, beer. Let's see. Is there any in here? Wash it. I lived in San Francisco for 10 years. So oh. I love sourdough bread. Fresh sourdough is the so she's best. She's doing one with raisin water. Oh. oh. Mito jar has plain water. Right jar has raisin water. Okay. Let me see whether I can put it in here. Yeah. <laughs> Is it on screen now? Okay, just tilt a little bit. Uh, okay. One. There we okay, go. Oh, 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 a little bit too much. Screen of a screen of a screen. There we go. Okay, thanks you for sharing. <laughs> Very cool. So uh, so she's going to experiment which one East survives tonight. Oh. <laughs> okay. Good luck. <laughs> Do you ever worry about the blob? You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Close to Halloween. The blob. I don't know how to do bread. I, that's another thing that I can't do. Fussy cutting, I can't do bread. I tried yeast <gasps> and, and I sew. killed it. And I can't sew. Okay, that, that's a lot of things. <laughs> 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 I can sew, but it's, it's one more project. I can sew on paper. <laughs> I can sew on oh, a layout until the cows come home. <laughs> I have to figure out the settings. I, I want to do that, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Yeah, that, that I can do. But my daughter came to me when she was little, and she was like, oh, they have these little doll outfits that match the girl oh. outfits, and you can sew it so I can pick the pick. And I'm like, oh, OK. Nice. <laughs> but a sleeves for doll, I mean, that's very hard to sew, a sleeves yes. for a doll. <laughs> well, my son's taking life skills, so I'm excited, because next semester he wants to sew. Oh, very cool. Have they done cooking he's, yet? He's doing cooking now. Ooh, does he make you dinner? <laughs> no. Oh. <that's> true. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a requirement of the class. <laughs> they make pizza dough, so I'm like, well, where's the recipe? Oh, I forgot the recipe. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Child. <laughs> that was right before break. So now, when you get back, get the recipe. Yeah. They're earning the keep. Okay, so you cut out. I cut out the uh, color wheel with the matching circle die. Okay. Ta da. And then I just lost, okay, and then I poked a hole with the pin tool just to make an opening for the brad to go through so I can attach the top piece on. Okay, so the top one cuts the hole, this one yes. you poke the hole, okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll just feed it through. To save space so we can have both on one die. Gotcha. Because you'd have to have like a big. Yes, that makes sense. Ooh, let's see if I can do this. Ouch. <laughs> Smarter than, brad brad. Smarter than the Brad. Smarter than the Brad. I think somebody actually makes a tool that help you separate Do them. them. Yes. Five years ago when it was yep. popular. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, you know, it <laughs> really does side. clean it, it up. Yeah, <gasps> it does. Look at that. Look how pretty. I'll hold it up. Oh, I should have kept going. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. Wow. I love this dye. And you can really see the... Like, so here's blue-green with more blue on top. Wow. And it is a different color than what it was. And here's blue, blue with blue, or no, that's white. That's green with yellow. Wow. <laughs> that's pretty. And that's yellow-green with red. No, no, no. 
that one's like complimentary, so kind of a, but it is neat to see all the colors like that too, yeah, it's all out in a row. So interesting, the white, the whites, I think this is one of the really interesting ones. Everybody needs to take that class. Why? I wish I could be taking, so, um, <laughs> <laughs> so there, so, um, best it, best it. Yeah. 469 says she making sourdoughs for the first time, but her mom is a great homemaker, but her major in college was home economics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I said, I wish I could be <laughs> taking that class. <laughs> yeah, I could use that apparently. I can't make bread. I can't sew. I need a home so. right now. I think now. it would be fun, you know, <laughs> just besides crafting, the more things to do with your hands. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love doing things with my hands. Though I cook like every night, so. Enough cooking? Yeah. I don't, <laughs> see, I'm all right. With I want to make bread. I don't want to cook. I want to make bread. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I do desserts, yeah. I can. You can bake. I can bake. I just can't do yeast because yeah, I kill the tricky. yeast. <laughs> Apparently. Yeast can be tricky. Like I do it too hot or I, I just, I don't know. The last time oh, I tried to make dinner rolls Shanna? and they were I'm hockey just pucks. There we yeah. are. I apologize again. I okay. will make sure I'm on to do Let's not disturb. Say our goodbye thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next week. Oh, okay. Yeah, reminder. I'll join here. So I was here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so remember next week we might have our live on um, Instagram or Facebook, but it will be on our phone with Shannon and I will be on a retreat and okay. we'll probably go live there. And thank you guys for joining thank us. Thank you. Thanks for Thanks sticking for around. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, we might do Zig um, brush mm. for the week after the next. That'd be fun. <laughs> Whatever that is. I'm excited <laughs> okay. about that. Thank you guys for joining us. Bye, Bye guys. Okay. <laughs>